Number 8. A P-40 Warhawk Fighter Jet While dredging the bottom of the Kerch Strait between Crimea and the Russian mainland in preparation for a construction project in 2017, divers discovered a submerged aircraft. After being lifted from the water with a crane, the plane was identified as a World War II-era Curtis P-40 Warhawk fighter jet. It was the third most produced American fighter throughout the conflict, with more than 13,700 made between 1939 and 1944. The P-40 that was pulled from the Kerch Strait was just one of many that didn't survive the war. It was most likely leased to the Soviet Red Army by the U.S. as part of a Lend-Lease program, which provided Allied forces with needed military equipment. The retrieval was initiated by a local historical group, Alexander Yolkin, who led the effort, described the fighter jet as a later version of the P-40 called the Kitty Hawk. He told the press that it was most likely one of the more than 1,000 planes that participated in a mission against the Nazis. Known as the Kerch Eltigen Operation, its primary objective was to push the German forces out of the Crimean Peninsula. The pilot flying the recently discovered P-40 was likely trying to return to his base. Due to its lack of visible damage, Jochen believes that the pilot landed it on the water on purpose and that he might have even survived the crash. Number 7. Unexploded Ordnance It's been nearly 80 years since World War II ended. Yet some parts of the world are still littered with unexploded munitions, so it's not uncommon for people in certain places to come across a bomb every now and then. But it's highly unusual for someone to find dozens of undetonated explosives in one place, which is what happened to one homeowner in the Solomon Islands in 2021. While digging a hole for a new septic tank at his property in the capital of Honaira, a man came across a batch of 101 bombs from the conflict. Specialists safely removed the weapons from the scene and put them into secure storage while working to defuse them. The homeowner who discovered the undetonated explosives was unharmed, but others had been less fortunate. Just months earlier, two people died when a World War II bomb exploded in a residential neighborhood in Honaira. In 2020, two employees of an ordnance removal agency were killed during their efforts to track the locations of unexploded ordnance in the area. During the war, the US and other allied countries dropped thousands of bombs on islands throughout the Central and South Pacific, but many of them didn't explode. While some efforts were undertaken to clean up the munitions after the war, not all of them were removed, and they remain a constant danger to people living in the Solomon Islands and elsewhere throughout the region. The Royal Solomon Island Police Force has a bomb squad that retrieves and disposes of any munitions that are discovered. Since 2011, the team has detonated more than 46,000 bombs that were mostly found in and around Oneira. But it barely puts a dent into the number of remaining explosives littering the landscape, and the bomb squad struggles to keep up with the sheer number of weapons that they're tasked with handling. Officials have warned residents in Honaira to only dig or build on property after it's been cleared by a company that specializes in ordnance removal. But the lingering problems have left many feeling as if the U.S. should do more to clean up the mess it left behind, which continues to claim innocent lives, especially since some bomb-riddled countries have received plenty of foreign aid to pay for cleanup efforts. Number 6. A Hidden Nazi Bunker Inside a Roman Fort one of Britain's best-preserved Roman forts, known as the Nunnery, can be found on the island of Alderney in the English Channel. It was built during the 4th century, and it went on to serve as a fort and barracks during medieval times and again during World War II, when the Nazis occupied the Channel Islands. Excavations began during the 1930s, but most of the bunker's history has only come to light in recent years. In 2021, archaeologists confirmed that it dates back to Roman times, and that it was likely built shortly before the empire collapsed as the Romans scrambled to protect their territory from invaders. With walls that were 10 feet thick, the bunker remained ideal for military use even 1,500 years after it was built. Evidence shows that the Nazis left one part of the nunnery known as the Sun Room untouched. Archaeologists are hoping it contains important clues about what happened at the site after the Roman collapse. After taking control of the Channel Islands in 1940, the Germans evicted the entire population. 
They built fortifications, bunkers and tunnels, as well as two forced labor and concentration camps. Excavations at the nunnery are ongoing, so there may be some new secrets from the bunker that are revealed in the next couple of years. We just have to wait and see what happens. Number 5. Mysterious Journals While clearing out his office in Madison, Wisconsin one day in 2015, the city's water utility supervisor John Cayula discovered a stack of 10 very old notebooks. They were found far back in one of his desk drawers and they appeared to be left behind by someone who used the office before him. He quickly realized that the notebooks contained journal entries from World War II, detailing the conflict as it unfolded. The entries included notes about the Japanese invasion of Pearl Harbor, the US declaration of war on Japan, and other major events of the war. It was also filled with entries detailing how the conflict affected daily life including the challenges of getting certain materials due to wartime rationing and heightened security concerns at the workplace. The author also kept work-related notes and wrote about his personal life, including going on vacations and attending sports games and family events. Cayola learned that the diaries were kept by a former utility assistant superintendent named Elmer Nordness, who started writing them during the late 1930s. Even as the war began, he maintained a consistent matter-of-fact tone, leaving emotion out entirely. But occasionally, he'd punctuate the entries with humor. Nordness worked for the utility until 1961, just six years before he passed away. The employees who were there at the time of the discovery were thrilled that nobody had thrown the journals out and for the rare glimpse they offered into daily life during the war. Could there be ancient Roman artifacts hidden somewhere in the nunnery on the island of Alderney? Let us know what you think in the comments below. And while you're at it, hit that subscribe button. Number 4. Lost Fossil In 1818, before we even had a name for dinosaurs, an early paleontologist named Mary Anning discovered the first complete fossilized ichthyosaur skeleton along England's Jurassic coast. It was sold to the Royal College of Surgeons in London in 1820 to raise money for Anning, who was struggling financially at the time. The fossil was still in the college's possession when it was destroyed during a Nazi air raid in 1941. It was a disappointing loss for scientists who, at the time, believed that the only remaining record of the fossil was a drawing from 1819 and discovered that it was a perfect match. Staff members at the museum thought that the artifact was a real ichthyosaur fossil. They knew that a former Yale professor, Charles Schuchert, had donated it to the museum in 1930 after buying it at the estate sale of fossil collector and dealer Frederick Braun. But unfortunately, the trail stops there, and the details of when and where Braun acquired the cast are unknown. Lomax and Massar found another cast of the ichthyosaur at Berlin's Natural History Museum in 2019. It was in better condition than the Yale fossil, leading them to believe that it was created at a later point in time. The casts enabled experts to confirm the accuracy of the drawing, which led to the discovery of some discrepancies, including bones that the illustrator missed. And it's likely not the only record of a missing artifact waiting to be discovered in museum collections. This serves as a reminder to researchers that there may be long-forgotten treasure somewhere in their collection just waiting to be revealed. Number 3. Trunk Full of Personal Treasures In 2022, a volunteer at the Phoenix-based nonprofit Treasures for Teachers discovered a bag filled with letters, photos, and other personal relics from the 1940s in the trunk of a donated car. Included among the remarkably preserved items were some letters written in Polish. The volunteer's daughter-in-law, Elizabeth Deisinger, speaks Polish and was able to translate some of the letters. She told new station KOLD-TV that they were written by a family in Poland, asking their relatives in Minnesota for help after their home was bombed and burned to the ground. With nowhere else to go, they spent the next eight months living in a bomb shelter. Deisinger, who was born in Poland, explained how one of the notes said that it took many months for the family to afford a single item of clothing. The letters captured the alarming reality of what life was like in the war-torn country and how the suffering continued even after the conflict ended, when much of Europe was left in shambles. 
As someone whose grandmother survived a Nazi concentration camp, it was important for Deisinger to get the collection to its rightful owners. She was unable to track down the previous owner of the donated car, so she began to look for the family of the person addressed in the letters, Anna Kowalczyk. After five months with no luck, she went public with her search. Within days, Kowalczyk's granddaughter, Teresa Retchwien, came forward to claim the items. She told ABC 15 Arizona that she had no idea how they ended up in the trunk of a donated car and wondered if they were given to a distant relative whom her family in Minnesota has never met. Teresa remembered her grandmother sending some clothes and other things to their relatives in Poland, despite being of modest means themselves. The family is still trying to figure out who donated the car, but they're grateful to Deisinger for taking the time to reunite them with a collection of letters. Number 2. Forgotten Photos George Story was going through the attic at his home in Gloucester, England a few years ago when he found what he initially thought was an old family photo album. He set it aside to look at it later, but forgot about it until he came across it again while cleaning out his closet. The album was filled with over 100 images that were taken in the Pacific Arena during World War II. The photos were fascinating to look at, but neither Story nor his wife had any idea who took them or who the album originally belonged to. He told the Gloucester Times that he found it in a section of their attic that the couple themselves had never really been in before they started cleaning it out. By then, they'd lived at the home for over two decades. In an effort to get to the bottom of the mystery, Story uploaded the small photos to his computer and zoomed in for a closer look. One picture features a Japanese ship called the Kinugawa Maru, which was bombed by the Americans during the Battle of Guadalcanal. The couple Story had purchased the home from had one son, Frederick Gordon Williams Jr. All three of them have since passed away, but Story's pretty sure Frederick Jr. took the photos. As a veteran himself, who was drafted into the Vietnam War, Story said it's important for him to put the album into the hands of a surviving family member. In late 2022, he reached out to the press in hopes that a relative will hear about the discovery and give him a call. At number one, Battlefield Grave Markers. On November 20th, 1943, US forces attacked the Tarawa Atoll in the Central Pacific, which was under Japanese control. After a heavy air raid and naval bombardment of Tarawa's main island, Betio, Marine units launched an amphibious invasion. American boats couldn't get very close to the shore because of the amount of coral surrounding the island, leaving the Marines with no other choice but to wade in on foot from 1,500 feet away. Half of them lost their lives before even stepping foot on land as they were met with 4,500 well-equipped defenders. The Japanese resisted fiercely, fighting almost to the last soldier. Fallen Americans were hastily buried in makeshift cemeteries that were scattered throughout the island. Shortly after the war ended, the burials were relocated to one main cemetery. In 1949, the graves were exhumed yet again and were sent to the U.S. for identification, but as many as half of the burials may have been left behind on Batillo. In 2021, the National Museum of the Marine Corps in Quantico, Virginia, acquired three wooden crosses bearing the names of U.S. Marines Robert W. Hillard, Clarence S. Hodgson, and Bernard A. Marble, who all died at Tarawa. Due to all the disorganization surrounding the burials, Hillard's body was never recovered and Marble's remains were lost at some point along the way, but were identified again after being relocated to the US, Hodgson had been buried at sea. The temporary grave markers are rarely found and are believed to be the only artifacts of their kind in a museum. If you found someone else's journal in the attic of your house, would you take the time to find its rightful owner? Or would you forget it's there and let it collect dust? Let us know in the comments below. If you enjoyed this video, be sure to give it a thumbs up and don't forget to subscribe. Thanks so much for watching and we'll see you next time.